Hey, muy buenas noches to everyone. I hope everybody's doing well. And as always, enjoying family. Also, thank you, Tony, for allowing me to get on your platform again. Stories written by a current prisoner. Now, here's a short story about how I felt when I first hit Pelican Bay. And how it was a big surprise to me how I was received. And this is more, more than anything, just to give those people that are on the outs, that are, they're on their way or they're thinking that, <clears throat> you know, you're going to get brownie points and they're going to hold any type of regards towards what you do or that you're going to be received with, uh, with, with something more than a cubo how things are and, and how they're sadly mistaken so when I hit Pelican Bay I was already feeling you know that guilt trip on how things had turned out now I knew that well at least I thought that I wasn't gonna get no backslash for for what had occurred cuz uh, I was assured by uh, Audrey he had the proper uh, the proper uh, backings to have this done so you know I had Pelican Bay and uh, I could sincerely say from being in all three shoes that that even though Corcoran is the most beat up one it's there's something there was something about Pelican Bay and the air that you took in it was just different you know from the moment you walk in and how Everything's quiet, and how there's a, there's actually a wall right there in front of your cell, just a couple feet away, and it was just different, you know. You could sincerely say you felt like this is a place you went to die, you know. It wasn't a place where where you felt like there was a room for anything else. But, you know, to suffer, to be sincere. But, you know, at this point it was like, you know, whatever is what I chose to, to do with my life. So, I want to keep pushing forward. Now, when I got to the section into my cell, there was a camarada that addressed me on the tier. And uh, he basically asked me if I... Uh, you know, if I was a, if I was a homie, or if I was a norteño, or, or what was I, you know, so I told him I was a camarada, so he introduced himself, he said his name was Carlos, he was going to shoot down a papalote, you know, with, with, with the welcoming, the, the appropriate welcoming, so once that, that I'm appeal came down, he introduced himself, you know, he was Carlos from SD, he was a, a senor, and that, in that section, he, he told me the, the camaradas that were there, and uh, the, basically who was in that pot, you know, and he was requesting, you know, the basics, you know, what was my placazo, my city, my clica, where I have been, the time lapse of where I was at, if I was ever under a Billy and uh, all the big events, you know, that had occurred throughout where I was there. So, uh, you know, as a camarada, you know, I, I answered it properly and uh, I tied my 128G with it and I sent it up. <clears throat> now, you know, like I stated before, I wasn't expecting, you know, a big old you know, muy bien hecho or anything like that, but at least, you know, uh, some type of recognition for, for the things that I have, I had thought that till that point I had done appropriately, but it was complete the opposite, you know, like, for example, I started getting backslash from, uh, from everything, you know, that's a funny thing, you know, that, you're on this main lines and you're thinking you're 
you're wiggling or you're doing things accordingly and, and right and uh, at the same time you had the the feelings in the back basically uh questioning everything you're doing you know because uh the very first thing was basically addressed due to the to the san diego round flow you know the camaradas from logan highs uh, as i told before on, on one of my recordings that you know there was camaradas from sd that started a little small melee against the camaradas from from 805 over uh rojo going out there tonight you're drunk and you know their tables were side by side so things were said and they went up against each other and when push came to shove and doing the proper footwork uh, you know i opted f to have uh you know rojo from logan heights basically get dealt with and so i got a backslash from it basically they wanted all the details behind it you know so i did i i followed through with that then you know i got questioned about about that issue with the the camaradas from maravilla you know because as i also stated in ironwood there was a, a vato that had gotten there from pelican bay and basically saying that he had the yard and when i shot word out it had came back from terco da chales to go ahead and deal with it which i did and uh but the thing that came after is uh, <clears throat> maravilla was really like you know you touch one of theirs and there was tension on the yard for a while you know so i had to explain what had occurred there and um, you know the funny thing is that I had the yard for Terco and I was doing things to to what I was instructed to do and not once did Terco actually spoke up you know they had me ans answer the questions and you know basically basically he left me alone man was a big old eye opener to be sincere you know and uh, that issue with crook too from romans it became a big old thing with lalo you know and for those that know at this time in pelican bay you know lalo were sherm and you know the florencia carnales they you know they had a lot of they had a lot of wiggle room up there to say the least you know but after all this was said, you know, I got, uh, I got chewed out on the sincere side, you know, for, <clears throat> for not having them well said on, on between my legs behind that issue with, uh, with the senor and Corcoran, you know, with Artie. Now, again, I was blessed because, uh, I actually got a our Artie and man he straight up shined me. There was no reply there. So Raul from Riverside he actually he got to talking to some of them and explain things for me better cuz uh to be sincere I wasn't getting nowhere. They just basically wanted to know who was co-signing behind that with Artie and uh, the person that could actually tell me wasn't responding so but it eventually got clear you know but even though it got clear I still got chewed out for not having the backbone to to question it and you know and make the proper decision but again you know when this got requested to me you know it had been signed and stamped not just from Marty but from a couple of them but as always, you know, when push comes to shove, a camarada don't count, you know. So he gets left alone. So this got moved past, you know. And a couple events happened back there to where uh, it was just a big eye-opener for me, man. It 
just became like a big old vecindad, you know. A big old comadres talking while, while they were watching clothes, you know. Dispensa, I say it like that, but that's what it was, man. Everything that I had done to up to this point, God looked at with the with the loop, you know. And uh, to be sincere, I have never stepped out, you know, like they say, you know. Me ando fuera la cazuela, I never did it, you know. I tried to do things for the benefit of of the camaradas. And I try to do things as as legit as possible according to the guidelines that we were instructed to follow. But as always, you know, it had no meaning. It is why I state that this this recording is mainly for those that are thinking about doing doing some time and getting brownie points. Man, there is no such thing as you getting brownie points. I said it before and I'll say it again, you know. The only thing that counts is what you're able to do for a carnal at that moment. And as long as you're there, the minute you move past that and you get to a different place where there's a different carnal, that has no meaning for it. They only care what you can do for them at that moment. Or if you're going to be able to, to do something for them down the line, you know. Which in their case is about money. You know and what they can put up their veins. I know, uh, I know, I probably sound ignorant as hell that I wasted so much of my life placing these people, in, and then I say here now, contradicting everything that I did, you know. But it's just facts, you know. I'm man enough to recognize how stupid I was, but I do it with the goal, you know. I do it with the goal that I could actually prevent. You know, a young camarada to go through the headaches, and in this, in my case, all the heartaches that I, I had to endure for a causa that just isn't there. You know, this man just care about how much power they have and what, how much weight their word has, how many soldados they got under them, and when push comes to shove, we're throwaways, and those are facts. I mean, just look at the, how I had to answer up for Rojo. You know, I got back there and I had to answer up to the Peelies from SD about them. And uh, even though it eventually came out that I was in the right for for having them, having camaradas move on them behind it, because uh, a lot of camaradas went to the hole and, you know, it made us look weak in the eyes of other races. You know, camaradas fighting camaradas, and, and still, you know, we look, look, let's look at this high desert issue, and it's exactly the same, you know, a camarada went out there drunk, he started some BS, he got dealt with, now, this issue in Salinas Valley and high desert, the same thing happened, you know, he was under influence, he started some BS, but the difference is, you know, one was a carnal, the other one was a camarada. You know, it is why, you know, them billies, they think that they're untouchable. And in reality, they are. Because, uh, you know, the proof is in the pudding. I mean, look at the exact same criteria, you know, but different reactions. Which in the case that I dealt with, it, it wasn't even that big. It was amongst camaradas. This was amongst races. But, you know, it, it just continued like that, you know. I had to answer up for Flacco from Harpies and why he ended up locking it up. Because uh, I had to put pressure on him behind him hitting dope and, you know, him uh, when he was hitting, he was telling me, you know, that he was checking in with Paw Boy, you know. He was uh, basically touching up a uh, Billy, but uh, in this yard, you know, uh, it didn't have no meaning to it, you know. This yard belonged to Terco, you know. You touching another canal, it didn't have no weight for Terco. 
so this happened and then I, I just started seeing a lot of funny stuff man that started uh, I'm not gonna say putting doubt in me it just it started me questioning what you know what I thought about the Billies up until this point like I remember there was an, there was a moment where uh, Topito they cracked his door and uh, they actually cracked uh, Guate's door and uh, instead of Topito running up out there and uh, taking care of business for for the clique uh, he just closed the door and uh, I know for a fact if a camarada would have done that he would have been done just do with his career but nothing happened you know nothing happened the other thing was when uh, when Alfie went out to court you know he got moved on by somebody that had dropped out and uh, the word that came back was that Alfie didn't even try to fight back he just curled up in a little ball and took it you know and uh, I was always raised since I was a, a kid when I first got into the gang, you know, that if you don't defend yourself, then you ain't worthy, you know, but again, nothing happened, you know, at this time, I kept going out to the hospital every two months due to, uh, they used to do a CAT scan and just checked up to see what, how my, uh, my cancer thing was holding up. And at this time, uh, Wedo, Wedo Sherm had, uh, had an order, you know, if you were able to make it out to the outside hospital, you were to, uh, you were to pick up every detail you could, because, uh, they had a little thing going where, uh, he wanted to escape, and he was doing dry runs with camaradas, and it was meant to happen, I think at this time, uh, Bad was on the outside, you know, helping him out with this, and I just remember that, you know, his own homeboys ended up checking in on him, you know, two other billies from his neighborhood, and they ended up telling squad about everything, you know, it's just uh, little things, you know, but when they got... An eye opener really opened up for me was uh, when Psycho from Avenues he started politicking against Chino from Gary Lomas, and uh, I think Psycho got frustrated. I don't know what happened or what went through his head, but uh, he had a family member of Chino's moved on as well as his wife, with no reasoning behind it. I waited to see some some type of backlash from it, you know, because uh, up to this point, all they talked about was, you know, family was untouchable. You were to mess with those that were in the game, but nothing came from it, you know, and uh, after Chino checked in, you know, I just used to hear the conversation, how he was a B and this, this and that, but I mean, come on, you know, how can you? You call a man that that lost all type of love for an organization that that didn't even help him when somebody pushed on his family. It is why I actually talk and I direct my message to those that are out there thinking that you know there's some type of uh, of loyalty there or. or you know, there ain't no, even no rules and regulations there, man. They do as they please. And it all comes down to, you know, how many people they have backing up their play. Because all that doing what's right or what's not, that don't make sense amongst them, you know. It's who's making the most money, who has the most workers. Psycho started politicking against Boxer from his own neighborhood. So all that homie love is out the window too. You know, I did a couple uh, I did a couple things with Billy's that I thought they were they were real cool. 
back there, which I will touch on. But I gotta say, you know, the one thing I regretted the most was uh, actually bringing me, bringing him into my city, you know, because you know I'm from the Bay Area, and up to this point, you know, we did our thing in the streets. It was mainly us, you know, Sureños, and and we went to prison. We handled our business, but on the streets, it was more about neighborhood thing. start start you know having men blessed with uh, you know with silent from the SD and I brought that into the neighborhood and I see for what it is now my the city and man bringing those type of individuals just brought chaos you know brought camaradas moving against camaradas all that carnalismo that at one point my city had towards Sureños, towards each other, it just, it disappeared, but, uh, man, it was a big eye-opener, to say the least, you know, at least for myself, but, uh, I didn't learn, you know, at the time, I think I was, I was moved by, uh, by, by what I had to do that, you know, I started seeing little glimpses, but uh, I settled in and I just started, you know, I started doing stupid decisions, which I'm going to get into it, you know, with a lot about what I did while I was back there. But, yeah, it's just, Pelican Bay was something else, you know. I don't mean to disrespect nobody, but exactly how it was, it was... Like I said, it was a big old vecindad, you know, where they go out to wash their clothes and, you know, highness are talking, they're comadreando, that's how exactly it was. One thing I could tell you though, man, they're on everything. You know, it's like a big old dolphin is always keeping an eye where he could actually get more or where he has that open window to, to get up in there and get more, you know. Cause, uh, man, it was just a big eye opener. I'll just leave it at that. You know how, how it was, uh, I really, really something that I had thought that it was never, you know, up until this point. I had a year there to where Raul had an accident and he passed away, and it just, uh, I lost the guy that was there to slap me back into, you know, into reality, but I will, I will touch on that, you know, I will touch, uh, I seen you guys' questions, you know, how you asked me, uh, about, you know, Ernie and, and them, and, uh, yes, I had some run-ins with them, I, I will get into into the things that I did with him, my thoughts on him, and, you know, I'm not gonna tell you guys that everyone up there was with them games, cause, uh, there was a lot of good billies up there, there was a lot of solid camaradas up there too, for example, I had a camarada that was up there since, uh, since 96, but, uh, he was never with that politics, you know, but in 96, he had, a uh, he had killed a Norteño in the child hole in Solano. And ever since then, he was up there, you know, for one, one thing or another. He, to be sincere, you know, he would have been out the shoe a long time, but uh, he was uh, the guinea pig, you know. They were using him. And, you know, my camarada, he was, uh, he was a homie, but he was more on the, on the paisa side, you know, so... He just tried to do things how he was supposed to, you know. Because uh, when he did that with the Norteño and, and Solano, it was uh, it was ugly. He did it, but he did it under, you know, a Sureño issue, Sur and Norte issue. He never thought about where he was going to end up and behind what, you know. But uh, it was good to see him. It was just uh, sad how he was stuck back there. 
in the midst of something that, you know, he never thought he was going to be involved in. But, you know, he didn't have it in him to, you know, to check in and do his thing. You know, it's sad to say that back there he had a, he had a heart attack and he passed on while I, while I was there. And it just goes to show, you know, that, again, sorry I keep repeating myself, you know, our life as a sureño or a camarada don't really have no type of meaning. So please, those that are on the outside, you know, hearing things, just hold that, hold that to your actions. Now, I'm not saying, you know, to go weak, to go PC, to, nah, I ain't saying none of that, man. Just uh, do your thing, but at all times, be smarter than the next man, you know. At least be smarter than this stupid man that, that ruined his whole life. Now, before I go, I want to answer a question. Someone told me that what's the difference between a Southsider, a Sureño, and a Camarada? Well, you know, it all depends on how you look at it. You know, a Southsider is what we're supposed to be when we hit the, when we hit the system. You know, we're all Southsiders. And a Sureño is, uh, once you, t you start supporting a Billy and you start doing pegadas or you start bringing it on work and you start touching the caja from the clica and uh, you start blessing the señores you know you start you start being a sureño you go out do a mission and you start earning your letras you know you start earning your sur your sureño and uh, then you know, it jumps from uh, from Suru Norma Raza to to what you become, which is a soldado. You know, a soldier under recognition. That's why you're you're blessed to get Sur. And you know, you get you get Sureño. Then from a camarada, you start you start earning your campol campolero. And uh, you know, your warrior shields and. In reality, you know, the only difference here is you have to earn things, you know. And they're not, you could be on the streets and you could go out and and take care of work, you know. And, uh, you know, take care of business, do missions. But when you come into the system, you're going to still have to earn your thing. Like I said it in the beginning, what you do for one man don't count for the next man inside so you know you, you could go in and tell tell a Billy Misa but you know if he can't double check on it then you have a Sur you have Sureño, Campol you can rest assured you're gonna earn them you know but those are the three steps you know Southsider, Sureño, Camarada and a carnal and it all has to do with with them you know you go in and uh, a pill is the one that's dictating as you're moving forward you know cause uh, me being from the Bay Area I could sincerely s tell you you know I was a Sureño a long time ago you know I was a Southsider when I was a kid running around partying but uh, once I started putting work on on my enemigos on the streets who were Norteños, in my eyes, I earned the right to be a Sureño. But, you know, again, it was an eye opener when I hit the system, and uh, it didn't work like that. If a Pili said you weren't, you weren't. If a Pili said you weren't allowed to have something, you shouldn't have had it. You're gonna earn it, you're gonna put in work till they tell you you're blessed to get it. But that's mainly the difference. I hope I was able to explain a little a little bit about it. And uh well this video I just wanted to touch touch in with you guys on a little bit on how I felt that how I felt Pelican Bay was or how it was different from other spots. 
the politics, the politics were real deep, you know. You could be in a pot with a couple pilis and uh, you could hear them on the tier playing chess or, you know, laughing it up. And at the same time, both them pilis getting at you, you know, talking about the next man. And of course, you know, if you were to speak about it, you were through. So you were you were put in the cross with a man with a lot of funny things that you had to put up with. But you know, the reason I say this because I I was a, a, a stupid ass, you know. And I say it to those listening that are still on the outs, you know. I didn't learn my lesson even when I got there and seen this, you know. I kept pushing and I kept working with them and. I keep going through heartache, heartaches, you know, because at the end of the day, I was, you know, I felt, uh, I felt I was doing the right thing, how was I supposed to do it, you know, but uh, I would touch in on, on the things that I got involved in back there, you know, with, with D from Fontana, I, you know, I did a couple things with, with Billy's back there that turned out okay, you know, they weren't bad, but uh, I would touch on that. I just want to address this, Just uh, I just want to keep moving, you know, little by little on my story, I, I want to be jumping the gun with you guys, so with this said, as I always say, you know, stay loyal to yourself, to what your needs are, to taking care of you, and always value your family, muchas gracias y buenas noches.